So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on our peer performance team event this morning. The purpose of these events is to give us a chance to meet and interact with the members of the peer performance team and also to inspire us to take action for healthier lives. But today we have the awesome opportunity to speak with Nick Del Popolo. Nick is a judo athlete and Olympian, a competitor in two Olympic games, a 10-time world team member, and the list of accomplishments go on and on. Nick, welcome. Hey, everybody. Hey, Chris. Thanks for having me on here, for giving me the opportunity to share my experiences with y'all. Nick, thanks again for being with us and for being part of the Shackley team. But where are you joining us from today? Fort Worth, Texas. Are you part in of... my uh, In my humble apartment. <laughs> awesome. No, it looks good. Fort, and the reason why I'm uh, in an awkward spot is we're going through a move right now. We're about to move into our first I'm house. So everything's being packed up. We're excited. Awesome. Awesome. Well, congratulations on the move. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so I wanted to get started today. Kind of, uh, if you could tell us a little bit about your origin story, like how did you get started? How did you keep going and who inspired you along the way? Um, two people from Westfield, New Jersey, my father, Dominic, and my mother, Joyce Del Popolo. They adopted me from an orphanage in, in former Yugoslavia, now Montenegro, at the age of roughly one and a half. My dad did karate for sheesh, 30 years prior to adopting me. And my parents put me in every single activity and sport you can think of, I, literally. Literally, I tried ballet, I tried dance, I tried gymnastics, ice skating, all the team sports. And we tried karate because my dad did karate. And we thought that that would be a cool family thing. I hated it, couldn't stand it. Uh, but they had judo class afterwards. Um, and this is all for my fifth birthday, too. They took me there. And I saw these guys getting thrown and chucked and choked and armbarred. And I said, I think I'd really like to do that. And especially because... At this time, it was the uh, you know, time of Power Rangers and Dragon Ball Z, and everyone was you know kung fu fighting. And I I just wanted to be in the the uniform, be kicking butt, and it was still cool because my dad and I could still go to the judo karate center together and you know participate in something similar. So that's how I got started in judo. And then what I was very fortunate because my first uh, sensei or judo uh, instructor was the the reigning two-time U.S. Olympic coach, Yoshisada Yoneska. And I didn't even realize that. My parents, we didn't even grasp the magnitude of that. And then I got kind of pretty good within the first three or four years. I went every day that I could go. I really liked it. And um, I won my first junior national title, I think, when I was seven. And uh, ever since then, I, I, was, I, I caught the Olympic bug. I, I really wanted to go to the Olympics for judo and hopefully win an Olympic medal, and I'm still on that quest. Uh, 26 years later. So, yeah, I, I'm, it's been my, it, it's what defines me as uh, not only a person, but uh, an athlete. I, I, I dedicated my entire life to this Olympic journey. So I'm curious, uh, you tried a little bit of everything, including ballet, which is interesting because when I'm yeah. looking through your uh, like your Instagram feed coming from someone who doesn't know anything about judo really, but you, you have these different moves that in my mind, I was thinking, gosh, this is kind of, you know, this is, they're almost like a dance move or some choreography in, in right. you know, and they, you have all these incredible names like Yuchi Kami, Ippon, Seiyo yeah. <laughs> um, And then I think my favorite was the Nage Komi, Komi, Komi. Nice that, moment, correct. Yeah, and that's the one where you're like grabbing people and the throw down, maybe, right? I could be yes, totally. Well, Nagi Komi is a judo throw, so it's like it could be any practice of any throw. I think the one you're talking about is the one where I put my foot up in the air and check the guy over my falling body. I mean, that's a classic, so yes, that's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Uh, but like, I it, it takes a lot of uh, you know. Sure, athleticism, yes, balance, but it, but you need. It's funny that you say it's like a dance because you need a good partner. Without mm -hmm. a good partner, you're not going very far in this in this game. Um, you need good partners, and you have to be. And the hard part about uh, judo and really all combat sports is you, you got to get thrown, or you got to get hit, or you got to get taken down in order to get better. And that's something you have to accept. So that's something I really liked. You know what I mean? I, I really mm -hmm. like that part of the game. I like 
to improve, but I like to learn from my mistakes. And that's why, uh, but that's why judo is also not for everybody. Yeah. So can you think back to like when you first got started with judo and like you got thrown down or you got defeated, like you were on the mat, you know, you're back to the mat and like exhausted, like what kept you going or what did you see in that that like made you want to uh, be better? Two things. One, I hate losing. I cannot stand losing. And it was so challenging. And I, I kind of, within the first four or five years, you know, you're a kid and you think you win the junior nationals and you beat a bunch of other boys your size around the country and you know, oh, I'm the best, I'm the best. And then probably around nine or 10, when I started going up to Canada and, you know, going around the Pan American Union for the, um, you know, infantile tournaments, I started realizing like, oh, everybody loses. Yeah. This sport's really challenging. Everyone's going to get beat. And that's why I really like it. That's, I hate losing, but I also, again, like I, I love to go back to the drawing board and, and, you know, think about why I lost and try and throw a million things against the wall until something works, you know? So mm -hmm. that's why, that's why judo stuck with me. It's very similar to wrestling. I've, tried, I've wrestled at a really high level as well, but the, the difference with judo is uh, we're, the United States historically isn't as, uh, I'm in the right word here, uh, right. Yeah, successful. Yeah. We're just yeah. not successful right? or as competitive yeah. uh, as, as USA wrestling. And I, I thought, man, if I could, if I could be really good at this sport or this art, I, you know, I, that'll be, that's a, that's a real challenge. That'll be really accomplishing something. Yeah. So can you help us out a little bit for those of us who maybe aren't familiar with judo? I, well, one, I'm interested in your, like your mindset going into a match and then kind of what's going on during the match. Uh, but also how do you win? Like what, what's like, what, wh where do you get points or how, how is it judged? I guess. And this is, this is uh, probably one of the reasons why judo isn't uh, a bigger sport in the United States, because the rule set, it can be difficult to understand. One, um, you need to score EPON, which is the equivalent to a full point or a knockout in boxing, or uh, it ends the match immediately. And the way you can do this is throwing your opponent to their back with power, control, and speed. Um, and you'll know if it's a full, full point. You'll see it and, oh, okay. And it's, if you ever, if anyone's ever seen Ronda Rousey compete in the UFC, the head and arm she does, every time she does that technique in judo, that would be considered a full point. Um, you can choke your opponent. You can submit your opponent. You can choke them. You can arm lock them um, also for a full point, or you can hold them down for 20 seconds, uh, equivalent to a pin in wrestling, but for 20 seconds. So those of, uh, and you can win by penalties too, but that doesn't happen so often at the highest level. Um, so yeah, those are the those are the ways you can w win a, a a judo match. Also, there's smaller points. A half point is wazari. Uh, you can win by this if if no one scores a full point within the four minute time period. Uh, but nowadays in judo, a uh, full point is almost always scored. I'd say I'd say sixty to seventy percent of the time at any level. So, uh, but the I, I can't say the easiest way to win, but the the most common way to win is by throwing your opponent to their back. Okay. So, so there's all those avenues to winning. Like, what are you thinking? Like, and, and I mean, this is an intense sport. It's a fight, right? So 100%, you never say, Hey, who did you play? You say, Hey, who did you fight? It's, yeah. and you have to win, uh, depending on weight category, four to seven matches in a given day to take a gold medal. So it's, it's, yeah. it's a little different from boxing where it's one fight, although that fight is long you have several fights and it's all out for the, the, the match time is four minutes, but you're probably out there building anxiety for eight minutes. So it's, it can be difficult. Very so similar you, to wrestling. So how did you get to the point where like you were eager for the fight? At least that's how it looks like um, when I watch your videos, but did you ever have the impulse to like run away before a fight? Like, and no, how no, that's actually one thing that I, I, you know, it's funny you mentioned that. I pride myself on. I have never dodged anybody. I've always tried to find the best opponent in not only the, I mean, at the highest level, okay, there are weight categories, but, you know, domestically, I'll go up, to, I'll go up a weight category, go down, I'll fight anybody. I need mm -hmm. the best competition in order to improve, especially, again, because judo is not a popular sport in this country. So, you know, I'm always eager to fight the best guys, and I, I want to knock them off. I want to make a name for myself. You know, that's, if you're not, 
if you don't have that mentality, I feel like you're in the wrong sport. Okay. So I can take us into your mind a little bit. Um, so how, like, how, how do you, how do you get that perspective that you're eager for the fight, even if you're going to lose or learn something? Um, I think, you know, many of us think maybe we focus on the disappointments or the pain, like how, how have you been able to channel that? So it's, it's all about this momentum and learning and growth. Well, you kind of already answered my question for me. I, you know, whether you win or you lose, it's funny. My first sensei, again, he was a very good sensei, very good coach. I won a lot in the beginning. I won a lot. I won a lot. I won a lot. And that's why I think I'm a bad loser. And though I, I lost at a tournament to a very tough opponent uh, from New York city, really tough opponent. And I didn't stop crying. Didn't, you know, wailing, bawling, kind of making a scene. It was, it was a little bit much. And my parents were like, <laughs> like what do we do here? You know, like when they, they went up to, we call him Yanni. They went up to my sensei and they said, Yanni, what, you know, is this normal? And he was like, yeah, it'd be, first of all, it'd be a bad thing if he was okay with losing. Mm -hmm. Second of all, um, I want him to lose. He, that means he's finding better competition. He, and he's going to learn from this mistake because the loss pains him so much, which it did. And I did learn from the mistake. You know, I, I made a mistake. And this is like a common staple in judo. I crossed my feet and the guy mm -hmm. took me off my feet with a foot sweep uh, because I made a, a, uh, a footing error, you know, a movement error. And uh, yeah, it stuck with me and it resonated for me for the rest of my life because it was such a big deal to my you know, little kid brain at the time. Mm -hmm. But in, in, and that same thing can be said for myself all these years later, you know, when I lose, it's not that I want to lose, but when I lose, I try to take value out of it. You know, I try to see, okay, it's yeah, that stunk, you know, but I fought well, I gave my best and you know, I, I made this error or man, the guy was just stronger this day. It's, it's okay. That's okay. I have to go back to, it's not always a technical thing. Maybe it's a strength and conditioning thing. Maybe it's a, a mental thing. You know, I wasn't there mentally speaking. I wasn't so eager to fight today. And that, and that has happened when I was making a lower weight category for a couple of years at the end there, I wasn't so eager to fight because my body was just diminished from making uh, this low weight. So then I had to move up to a higher weight category to uh, further you know, prolong my career. So I, you know, to answer your question in a nutshell, uh, I know I give you a lot, but it, when, even when you lose, you, you still win. There is value there. It's probably more value, arguably speaking. Mm -hmm. No, so I that's why that. for me, it's always a win-win. There's never like a, a loss going into a fight. And when I go into a fight, uh, I believe I said there was two parts to this answer. Sorry. Um, I don't really, I try not to focus too hard on the uncontrollable things. Is the ref gonna make a bad call? The big crowd, you know, am I prepared? Yeah, I'm prepared. I'm at the tournament. I paid all this money to be here. You know, I made all these sacrifices to be here. And uh, I don't really think too much about what my opponent's gonna do. Like, yes, I watch film on my opponents, mm -hmm. but not so much to where it's saying, oh, they have a good, this technique, or they have a good arm lock, or they have a good gas tank. It's more, oh, this is how I can implement my game onto them. This is how I can impose my will onto them. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, no, I love that. And you gave us some amazing sound bites in there. I'm gonna <laughs> find those quotes and cross stitch them and put them in my kitchen. Um, okay, so, so, it, and I had a quote from you that I want to read that was on your Instagram page, not even, you know, about even practices and how failing in practice uh, is can sometimes be part of this journey as well. So, said you're not always going to have a great practice. To be a champion, you have to accept the fact that you can push through bad days. You can push through anything. You will become unstoppable, not because you never have bad days, but because you continue despite them. Right. So just so much inspiration. Right. From that. And that's like, uh, and that, you know, I, I'll, part of the point of having my Instagram is, you know, yeah, it's me. I can brand myself. That's great. But it's also because uh, I, judo is supposed to teach you the, the founder of judo, Dr. Jagoro Kano. It's a guy that's about like five foot four, little guy, but he he wanted to make judo more of a a lifestyle, like to take those things from the mat and implement them into everyday life. You know, it really the big thing about judo is fall seven times, you know, get up eight. So you just gotta keep going forward despite bad days or despite bad rounds or bad practices. You just gotta go forward. 
make you better. Awesome. Uh, that inspires me for everything. Um, okay, so my time is up. I'm going to give uh, my co-hosts, Carolyn and Bill, a chance to ask you some questions, and then we'll move on to our audience questions. Cool. So Carolyn, welcome. I know you've probably been rained out in the Keys. Actually, we have sun today. We awesome. really have sun, which is amazing. I'm intending to go and actually see what it looks like. Thank you. And Nick, what inspiration. Oh, my goodness. Um, with so much energy and so many great lessons. Would you connect us with your Shackley world? Like, how did you, how do we get the good fortune of having you as part of the Shackley family? And what does that connection look like? Uh, well, hold on one moment, one moment. I, I can't, I can't take it. I got to let her in. Sorry, guys. Uh, I'm Nick's wife. I'm holding the phone. Our cat is meowing at the door <laughs> because it's shut and she's not allowed in here. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I couldn't take it. Um, I, I became interested in Shackley. Like Chris said, uh, USA Judo partnered with Shackley. And the first thing for me as an athlete, again, it's very, I, I can't stress this enough, is safety and what I'm consuming. You know, and I, I saw that it was 100% ready to go. And then I tried a couple of the products uh, and I, I was blown away by the performance hydrate. Kitty, sorry, by the performance, <laughs> but by, by, by the performance hydrate plus. And like I said, I was cutting a lot of weight at a certain time in my career. And that stuff was literally the only thing at, at times that kept me going. And, and I, and I like knowing that I'm not going to test positive or I don't even have to worry about that. You know, you walk into GMC and you see all these things that look great. They sound great, and you're really not sure. So, and you don't want that feeling of doubt, you know, anytime you have to consume uh, anything. So that's and, and then you know. Furthermore, uh, after I, I found a couple of products I really liked, and then you know I connected with Bill Roy, and I got a couple more products, and I'm now I'm all sh shackled out. I got sh shackly dishwasher, which I, I think was a stupid joke about last time. Uh, <laughs> You know, Shackley Recover. I love the Shackley Performance Recover. Um, the build is a really good one. The Shackley Performance Build. A anything that makes me feel whole after practice or gets me through practice or my training is something I'm looking looking for, you know, and without having that, again, that feeling of, oh my gosh, I might feel a drug test because this stuff had like gangrene in it, you know. So I, I that that's why I'm all about the, the Shackley product and the Shackley team. I had that feeling of reassurance when I take the product. Well, Nick, we we uh, who are on the, the field side of Shackley really appreciate those two things that you have said. I've always said that the model that you provide is the products are safe and the products work. And right. if those are the two criteria, then if they work for you performing and competing at the absolute highest level, being drug tested all the time, then we can be comfortable that they're okay for us, for our grandkids and our grandparents and everything. And so thank you for that wonderful example and for your inspiration. Oh, you're welcome, you're welcome. Bill, take it on. Thank you, fantastic. Carolyn, great comments, Nick. We really appreciate your spontaneity. And with your kitty, we can just say that is a catastrophe. <laughs> so It really is, but she's, our, she's a sweetheart, but she's like, Probably your most friendly cat, but she just, anytime the door is closed, she's like, hey, what's going on in there? I want in. <laughs> so totally, totally fine. So one thing I always admire about the um, athletes in combat or combatant sports is, you know, you're facing off against someone who is equally as driven and as strong and well-trained. And especially at your level, there are no, you know, gimmies. There are no easy <laughs> matches. Um, but uh, what's really intriguing about judo, unlike say MMA or boxing, I just don't hear any trash talk about your opponents. You know, it's all about respect and, 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 you know, good conduct towards your opponents. How, right. how does that happen? Talk to me about that. Well, that, going back to the founder of judo, Dr. Jigoro Kano, who founded the sport in 1882. And I, the sports, uh, his home country is Japan. And, you know, you, it's all about etiquette, respecting not only your sensei, not only your judo school, but your opponent, you know, because like you said it right, you know, you know your opponent has put in 
a body of work, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, emotionally, spiritually, and you have to respect that. You, there's no, you're right. There's no trash talk. And if there is, it's minimal and everyone kind of frowns upon it. It's not really a thing in our sport because of uh, the culture of the sport. You know, everyone's realizing, especially like you said, at the highest level that oh, this guy's going to be pretty good. There are no gimmies. You know, this is going to be a tough fight. This is going to be hard training. This is going to be, we're going to learn something new today. And that's, and I'm, I'm going to be humbled every single day. And that's, that's another reason why I love judo. It's, it's constantly teaching me, you know, humility. And again, I'm not the best guy out there. There's no reason to trash talk. And you set a good example for, yeah, your students, other, uh, other practitioners. But then again, that crosses over off the mat. You know, you're, you're looking for, you know, if you want respect, you treat others the way you want to be treated. And that's like a hallmark, a hallmark of any good judoka any strong judoka they you know they'll see you they'll give you you know proper respect if you give them proper respect so that's that's why judo rocks awesome thank you so much great all right thank you okay so now we'll turn to a few questions from our audience uh first off we have jessica from florida she is a uh, gym owner down there and uh inspires a lot of people to you know take action to live healthier lives and so, uh, Jessica, what question do we have for us? Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, we can. Hey, welcome. Oh, great. Okay. So, um, early on, you spoke about um, dedicating your life to this sport. And that really spoke to me because in my own personal life, I know people that have dedicated their lives to things. And um, I think there's something very powerful in that. So I was wondering if you could briefly mention, you know, in your small group, you know, your family, your friends, like in your inner circle, like how many of the people that are closest to you have dedicated their lives to hmm. something? Maybe it's not judo. Maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's being a vet or a doctor or, you know, whatever their life passion is. But how many people do you know personally that have dedicated their lives to something just like you have to judo? It, it's um, I can't say literally everyone I know, but the people I'm closest with, every single person. And that's mm -hmm. not by accident. You know what I mean? Correct. You recognize yes. other people that have are driven like you are, whether it's judo, playing the violin, becoming a chess master, uh, mm -hmm. being an actress or an actor. You know, you recognize, you can see it, you know, you, and you can feel it, you can hear it. It's a language that's spoken. That's an, it's almost unsaid. You just see drive. Wow person's really yes. pushing you know it so yeah uh, you can feel like i said you can feel that intensity and every single and my my tight-knit group is very small and it might be because of that you know and i i used to think i was a type b personality until i got around other type b's and i was like oh man i'm something might be wrong with me you know so but every single person and, that's, and there's nothing wrong with that they're just all really driven individuals they're yeah. all trying Amazing. to be not necessarily the best at what they're doing but the best version of themselves you know and 100%. every day trying to look yeah. for a not necessarily a flaw again but more of a how, how can we make this thing better how can i become a better salesman how can i become a better you know basketball player and, and you notice mm -hmm. that you know so mm -hmm. yeah wonderful Th thank you thank you jessica is carmen uh, carmen are you still with us i am i am here <laughs> hey carmen <laughs> Carmen, tell us first of all, like you've been a lifelong practitioner of a martial art and maybe give us a, a really brief history of that. And then we'd love to hear your question. Well, I'm very fascinated by his story. I, I am from Mexico and I started martial arts when I was um, eight years old. And I just love the character that builds as you grow up. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and uh, I, I just hear you and I'm like, yeah, it's true. There's a lot of character building as you pursue, you know, anything. But there's a lot of emotions too, right? In the midst of fighting. <laughs> so I, I more see, emotions than anything. Yeah. Right? So I remember because I used to compete, but then now I have kids and I just teach. But anyhow, so I see there's a lot of like adrenaline, self-control, humility and perseverance. They can be all together in one moment of your competitive moment, right? Correct. How do you how do you balance all that? <laughs> you know, because you have to respect and protect your um, 
person that you're fighting, but also you want to show that you are, you're better, <laughs> right. right, in a way. So how does that work? How, what do you tell yourself, your, your opponent, like, I'm, I have to win, but I have to be clean, good foreman, you know, all that. I guess I, that was, will be my question for you. And I have many other ones, but. <laughs> no, I, I think I understand your question. Um, well, first and foremost, all of fighting and all of, you know, your training and your aggression, for lack of a better term, or your intensity, that all stays on the mat. And that's, you know, as you know, that's part of the reason why martial artists are martial artists. You know, all that stays in the mat. You bring those you know, the humility, the respect, the obedience, the discipline that goes into your regular life off the mat, but all that intensity and, that, you know, that training and that, that combat that obviously that stays on the mat Two, taking all these different emotions and feelings into competition and being able to control them while fighting another opponent of equal or even possibly greater level. And, you know, dealing with that again, that's just, that's, um, and this is such a cliche answer and I almost hate using it, but it's, it is true. You got, you have to be in the moment and believe in yourself and your training and your club and your coach. And if, you know, if, if you don't believe in any of that uh, up to that, that, that crunch time moment, you're probably in the wrong club. You have the wrong coach or you're in the wrong sport. This isn't for you. Yep. You know what I mean? And I, and I know that takes, you know, practice and training, practice, that's why yeah. we practice and train, but, um, yeah, like you, it's just a matter of believing in yourself. And that's, that's what training is supposed to be for. Those are all dress rehearsals, right? So you go to training and like, yeah, you're going to, that's why I wrote that thing that Chris mentioned on my Instagram. Yep. I've had some bad days in training and I haven't been a, a model athlete in training sometimes, you know, and I'm in quite frankly, I'm embarrassed about, even now I'm blushing because I'm embarrassed about those days, you know? <laughs> Um, but in tournament, I'm not embarrassed about those days. You know, I know a lot of people are watching. I know a lot of fans are watching. Kids are watching. My family's watching. You know, the people that are most important to me, you know, my wife, my coach, my everybody that means something to me is watching. I have to be a good example, not only for me, but that team. Yeah. Well, it seems like you have to show your co courage right there with everything. The other question I had is when you compete, is that by weight, by size, by rank? How do you, how do they do that? Uh, with the exception of height, you just hit the nail on the head. So in, okay. in Olympic style judo, we go by kilograms, not pounds, uh, you know, way out to the same thing. But yeah. uh, so for me, I was men's light middleweight and now I'm men's mm, half middleweight. So okay. And I, mean, I, I weigh 81 kilos right now, which is roughly 178 pounds. I weigh 178 pounds and I compete 178 pounds. Um, okay. But yeah, it goes by, it goes by uh, weight, but also level, you know, okay. for each tier, you have to get this medal or this result in order to graduate to the next one and then so on and so forth. Okay. And I guess, and one more, I'm sorry. I, I just get, got excited. No, so okay. when you uh, when, when you're competing, uh, when I used to compete and you know you can defeat your opponent, but then somehow you're losing. I don't know. Right. Distraction. What do you tell yourself when you're like, like, you can win this, you can win. So what is something that it clicks and then your victory comes to, to win? Like I've been in places where I'm 2 zero and the person who has three points win. Right. But then you're behind. <laughs> And, and somehow something click and then you win. But the, what is the thing that you will, you tell yourself that you will be able to win? Does it make sense? Again, what I'm asking? Yeah, no, it 100% makes sense. I, I've been in this position many times and I've come out on the winning side of things probably half the time, you know, and it's not, it's not, you don't tell yourself. I, I almost don't like saying what not to say, because if I say don't throw a gutter ball, people immediately think throw a gutter ball, right? Because you get that image in your head, but nothing negative, nothing I'm going to okay. lose or I'm losing. It's all positive. Okay. But it's not necessarily um, the end result. Like I have to win. I have to win. Yeah. Obviously you want and have to win, but for yourself, but what am I going to do in order to win? Keep moving your feet. This, my man's getting tired. He's getting tired. Move them around, move them around, do your best technique, show them something, you know, and listen to your coach. And, you know, again, that's trusting in your team. If your coach is there, listen to him too, or listen to her too. Um, 
but it's it's all positivity. You know what I mean? And it's it's not again, it's not so much end result. I got to win because that can be stressful and counterintuitive. Really. Yeah, you know what you I mean? Well, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So in order to keep focus, like again, it's staying in the moment, focusing on what you need to do in order to be successful. Thank, thank you very much. I enjoyed this chat. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, I enjoyed yeah. your question. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Carmen, for your insight. And thanks, Nick. Okay, so our time is up. We've got to wrap. Uh, Nick, how can we follow you and support you? Oh, shoot. This is my, this is my least favorite part. Uh, okay, on, on Twitter, or no, yeah, Twitter and Instagram, I'm at Nick for Gold. Uh, not N I C K F O R G O L D. Um, uh, on Facebook, it's just my name, Nick Del Popolo. Um, help me out here. Am I forgetting anything? YouTube. YouTube, same thing, uh, Nick Del Popolo. So that's, if you want to follow my journey and support me, uh, that's how you can, those four ways are the ways you can do it. Great. Thank you. And I just want to put a plug in for your Instagram, especially. Like, I'm so inspired by that, not only by the sheer Thank athleticism you. you show, but there's such a community spirit and leadership in that. Like, I think Thank all of us can can learn, <laughs> you know, how to build community through that. Thank you. Okay, so Nick, you've got the last word. What do you have for us? It's you. Oh, it's me? <laughs> oh, oh, no. Yeah. That's so stressful. Uh, I screwed this up last time. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, honestly, uh, if I could leave you guys with anything, again, I think the, the cornerstone of our conversation today was, you know, I brought this up several times, is how judo transitions into my everyday life, you know, and you don't have to be a uh, judoka or high level judoka to, in order to do this. If you're practicing sport or if you're, you know, a lot of you guys are going for a run today. If you're doing that, if try to bring those positive things into your everyday life, that same preparation, that same mental, physical, emotional, even spiritual preparation or dedication into that run or to that lift or that workout or that match or game or whatever training, try to bring that um you know into your into your everyday life that same that same preparation and intensity you know so that I, and that and that's like that defines the judoka so if i can give you anything from judo that would be it awesome incredible thank you so much uh, again just what a call this has been so we really appreciate Thanks, it look forward to following and thank you once again for being part of the shackley family so uh, thank, thank you, you guys for having me. <laughs> Thank so you cool. for allowing Thank me to be part of the family. It's a very cool opportunity. Thank you. Ah, Bye. Nick, good job. Appreciate Look it. forward to following you. Everyone, have a great day. Have a Take great care. day, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.